I've been a forestry worker for about 10 years, doing contract forestry jobs, everything you can do in the woods except logging. Uh, I had was a pretty experienced tree climber, climbing trees using rock climbing equipment to collect seed for reforestation to, uh, in order to plant the next generation of trees for our timber resources, and was having a good day, collecting a lot of cones, had been through several trees, when suddenly some branches that turned out to be untrustworthy, broke out from where I was anchored to them, and I fell about 60 feet. I, I don't remember the fall. I don't remember hitting the ground. I, the next thing I really remember is being in Sacred Heart Hospital in Spokane and being told that I was never going to walk again, that I was paralyzed from the waist down, and that there was not a damn thing anybody could do about it. Unless you've had that happen to you, you can't imagine how it completely overturns your life. It overturns everything you planned, everything you, everywhere you thought you were going, everything you thought you were doing. You're definitely in no shape uh, to be engaging in hard-nosed negotiations over, over exactly how much money you're going to need in order to have a decent life. The thing that made it possible for me to reorient, to find uh, a new direction to rebuild my life is that I had is that I was on the job at the time I had my injury and I was insured by Washington State's workers compensation system. I knew people who had been um, doing similar work in the state of Oregon and who had had similar accidents. I didn't know them well. They were just folks I sort of had met in various contexts doing the work I did. And I knew that they had been presented with lump sum uh, settlement offers and that they had taken them. There was one, uh, I only, I never knew her last name, her name was Susie. She got hurt, I think, the first week she was doing this kind of work. And um, I heard that she took a very low settlement. I never heard how much it was. I kept in touch with friends who knew her uh, over probably the next five, six years. And I heard she ran out of her settlement money really quickly and that she never did find any work. She's gets around in a wheelchair just like I do, uh, I, I honestly don't know how she's doing now. I heard of another guy uh, working, doing the same kind of work in Southern Oregon who worked, who knew people I knew, and it was the same story. I mean, they, they're, um, they're living hand to mouth right now and, and living um, on welfare, essentially. If I had been presented such a settlement, I would have been. I would have felt pressured to take it. I, I certainly didn't see any other option. Uh, I was overjoyed when I found out that uh, Washington State had a different set of, of benefits available to me. I didn't want to sue my employer. I was really delighted that our system was set up so that I didn't have to sue my employer, that I didn't have to sue the the, the makers of the safety equipment I was using. That that I could instead rely on a system of insurance that I'd paid into, that my wages had supported. Uh, I, I, I felt like that was right, that was fair, and I've never felt like I was taking advantage of the state. By God, you know, anyone who thinks I'm, uh, I, uh, that I, I'm uh, cutting a good deal should uh, wheel a few, uh, a few miles in my wheelchair. The benefits that I've had from workers' comp of uh, gotten me through the times that I couldn't work. They gave me the retraining I needed to um, learn, acquire a different set of skills, a different set of credentials. They paid uh, for uh, an adaptate for an adaptation to my house so that I could live in it. So that so that I did I, I was actually had to move when I got out of the hospital. I had to move to a temporary apartment because the place I lived in wasn't accessible. Um, they paid for. Uh, Adapt, adaptations to a car so that I could drive. They ultimately paid, after a lot of negotiation with the Department of Labor and Industries, they paid for me to uh, continue in my university education and get a degree. Uh, and um, they paid, uh, and I'm on a, on a pension, uh, a pension from Labor and Industries, and so um, it pays at the level that my time loss uh, would have paid, and that's that's a lifetime benefit, and I'm I'm delighted to have it. It's uh, it got me through a lot of hard times.
the one thing that I really didn't understand when I was newly injured, that I didn't understand for uh, probably years later, was how many ongoing medical costs would be associated with my injury. All of that would have bankrupted me the very first time. And instead, Labor and Industries has been there to pay for that. And uh, I've been able to, once the, once the acute crisis has passed, been able to get back to my work and back to my life. That, that's an incalculable benefit. I, I think you know, legislators who are, who are trying, to, uh, trying to improve businesses' balance sheets at the expense of injured workers should be ashamed of themselves, really. Uh, it's... When I think about the difference between the experience I had and the experience of the folks I knew in Oregon who had similar injuries doing the similar job, I think if, if legislators understood that, they'd feel a sense of shame and they'd vote against this bill. It's, it's unconscionable. It is unconscionable to not to fulfill the state's obligations to its injured workforce. Uh, workers are out there. I was out there making sure that we had a new generation of trees so that uh, we'd have uh, timber resources for the future. I was, I was holding up my end, doing my job. And I think it's time for the Washington State Legislature to hold up its end and maintain a benefit system that I think our state can be proud of, that we shouldn't regard as, as, some, kind of, uh, as some kind of mistake and, and join in a race to the bottom to cut benefits.